Hey, yo, what's poppin'? So I'm here with the final two matches of the NA Kickoff Clash and the closing out the Stage 1 of the Overwatch League Season 5. Overwatch 2's inaugural season. Um, so, give this video a like or subscribe if you enjoy the content. Leave a comment down below if you have any comments, any opinions. Maybe you think I'm very wrong about something. You want to angrily type how bad I am at analyzing the game or whatever. Uh, that's hard too, but I'm going to start right in on the Dallas Fuel against the Atlanta Rain. Dallas being the favorite here, and they end up winning 3-0. Or 3-1, rather. They end up winning 3-1. Uh, Ilios goes the way of Atlanta, kind of standard, as you expect it to do. Atlanta do get the, uh, get the first pick here, by the way, because they come from upper bracket, so they end up being the higher seed at, at, at this point. Uh... And they pick Ilios, and they've been known to win Ilios because Venom pops off, and it's exactly the same thing. It's what happens again. Venom pops off, and Atlanta just look better. Dallas try to mirror them on Doom on Ruins. It doesn't work out. They're just better on the Doom comp. But uh, Well is very close. But despite it being very close, it felt like Dallas was always on the back foot. They win a fight, and then they stall one out a super long time. Uh, but they never, they don't like win anything else. They win like one fight on the map, really, and just have a super long stall. And Atlanta end up winning on top. So you can argue that's still good and that's bad on Atlanta's end, but it, whatever, they don't ask how, they ask how many, right? So Atlanta end up winning well. Lighthouse, Dallas. Uh, Atlanta's comp really struggled to beat Dallas on, on this one. Uh, Dallas playing Soldier, Tracer, Winston, Ana Lucio, and that's what they did on well as well. And, uh, Atlanta playing Reaper, Tracer, Doom, Moira, Lucio. That's also what they played on well, except they played Ana instead of Moira, I guess. Small things. But Atlanta's kind of really struggling to get up onto the high ground that Fielder is sitting on, on the Ana pick. And actually, Dallas is playing Hanbin here uh, on the Winston. Am I crazy? No, I am crazy. He, they were playing Fielder. I'm sorry, they were playing uh, Fearless. No, no comment. But, uh... Yeah, so... They're struggling to take that high ground. That was kind of win by controlling it. And wherever Atlanta do get point, but control, I don't know what I was going to say with a P, they get control of the point, and they just kind of collapse on Dallas anywhere they go, but it's not enough. Eventually they find some nades, and Nano goes crazy. And for uh, Dallas ended up winning Lighthouse. But then on Ruins, they try to mirror the Doomfist, and it just doesn't work. So, not an awful map from Dallas. It's probably their weaker map. Uh, there's a reason they like to pick it. Venom known for popping off on this map, and he does it He does it again. He does not He does not disappoint on Ilios. And uh, Atlanta looked pretty good, and it looks like we're going to have a good tight series. And we just don't, actually, because King's Row comes out. Uh, Hanman comes in for Fearless. Nero comes in for Venom. And... Uh, it's just a Zarya mirror, right? It's a Reaper Soldier Zarya on a Lucio mirror. And Dallas is just better at those. Atlanta's offense, not that strong. They hold... Uh, Dallas hold them in the last corner of B for a minute. Uh, for the whole thing, really. And Edison is playing very well. Hanbin's playing very well. You're, you're not expecting to beat Hanbin... And Azaria Mira, as good as Hawk is sometimes, uh, and sometimes he turns it into high gear, but Hanbin, consistently, he's getting 5Ks, he's hitting big grabs. Uh, him and Edison have a very good coordination, and the Dallas High Mind just look better. Uh, Kai, I think it's very funny. Edison waits for him one time, and like around a corner with the shorty, basically, caps him, and then the next fight, he comes back, and he just gets solo grabs. So it, I don't know if Kai, they're trying to tilt Kai or if it just happened out like that, but it was very funny to me. Um, anyway, Dallas's offense, they just kind of win. Uh, Edison, Hanbin, it's the same story. They only use beat to cap. They just, they just roll up and win. It's just better. The little things they're doing, each player individually, it's just better. Um, and Electra's not beating Dallas in the mirror. It's not unexpected. But, uh, yeah. Edison and Hanbin, crazy this map, and Dallas look very strong on King's Row. On the circuit rails, a 3-2 victory for Dallas. Carrillo comes in for Edison. This was Atlanta's pick, right? 
and it was pretty close to be honest on Dallas's offense. Uh, Dallas playing Widow, Genji, Sigma, Zen, Brig. Atlanta playing Sim, May, Ryan, Bap, Lucio. But uh, there's some pretty odd things going on for Atlanta because they kind of get rolled on A, like completely. And their comp is messing up. It's messing around. They start the Ryan. They switch over to this to the Sigma. And then they lose all their ultimates. And then Dallas end up messing up around with their comp because they're running Zen, Brig. But then they end up with Fielder on Lucio somehow and Chio on Ana. And I don't know how that happens, but it does. Probably, I don't, I actually don't know. Um, and they're doing really well. Nero stabilizes them. Uh, Nero has a very good round at this point. Whether it be on the Genji, he goes, he goes big on the Genji. He goes, swaps to Hanzo, and he picks a bunch. Um, Dallas eventually swap over to the Zarya stuff right off the Sigma. And they get past B and they have like a minute 30 going into C. And it wasn't that bad because... Although they lost a lot of time, they lost like, what, three minutes on B. It was like a fight where they had a weird comp, and then they lost, and then they took another lost one, and then they finally get their comp together, and they make it through. So it wasn't actually like they were out of control, it wasn't like they were getting super held or anything. They just felt like they needed to, they took a little bit of time to change things up. So they get through it. They're heading into C, and Nero just is getting picks, right? He, he's playing out of his mind on the Hanzo, he's picking Hanbin, he's picking Gurio, and... He's looking great, but and um, Dallas do end up pushing it. No, 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 no. Dallas are pushing to the end, but Hawk comes out of spawn, does big things. Hawk is a very good match as well, and uh, Dallas is stopped at the end of C. Moving over to Atlanta's offense, not as good. Uh, Atlanta playing Widow, Echo, Zarya, on a Mercy. Dallas playing Widow's Tracer, Sigma, Zen, Brig. Nero swaps over to Hanzo pretty quickly. And they kind of roll through A. Sparkle kind of trolls a little bit. He gets caught out. And it allows Atlanta to get some purchase on that bend. Um, Hawk, at this point, really starts to play well. His grab goes big. His, he gets nano that goes big. And he's playing a very good game. But uh, they end up going into B with time as well. Dallas do stabilize with the Hanbin flex on B with a, lot, with a good amount of time. And uh, Dallas are getting some picks with their Widow. They're making Atlanta cut back, and that's the last fight. But then Nero and Kai on the double sniper. They are getting picks, and it's looking pretty good to finish the map. But UV goes down to Sparkle all alone. And then Hawk dies because he doesn't have the healing to hold out on the point, and Dallas ended up winning despite Kai and Nero doing their part, getting the big hit, the big picks. Uh, after UV dies, it's just a wrap. Um, so it's it was a pretty close one. But it didn't feel like Dallas were really out of control. Yeah, Atlanta got a little bit of momentum off of Hawk and off of the snipers and off of Nero specifically, who had a very good map. But uh, they still didn't feel out of control. It still felt like it was very well within their rights to win this map. Uh, Nero almost takes one. Kai almost helps. But it's not enough with the point presence. Now we move on to Coliseo. It is a 140 to 0 for Dallas, the fastest push map in the West. Literally the fastest in the West. Edison comes back in for Gurio, but it's just not even close. Atlanta roll out on Widow Hanzo, Zarya on Lucio. Dallas play the Hanzo Soldier. Uh, that very first fight, you can tell it's not going to be great because there's a big flank by Sparkle on the Soldier. And Dallas just wait for the flank to happen. And they pick their time and they, they move in, they collapse the each other like from both sides right and atlanta just dying and dallas never give up Kai swaps to soldier eventually but he did a little, so little on air on widow and it's just not good enough uh, and hanbin is just playing so aggressively he is pushing into their spawn he is grabbing them he is getting nanoed and he is just running a train on them and it's just it spirals out of control uh it takes dallas uh four minutes and four seconds to cap all the way and the next best was like five with Florida and like seven with Shock. So it was just unreal. This, the fact that we get this in the semifinals, really, the, the losers' finals match was, was crazy. Um, Dallas head and shoulders better than Atlanta, it seems. So overall, Venom got them their map win on Ilios as he is. He's basically contracted to get them a, a win on Ilios. That's his job. He gets it. Uh, and Dallas went, Dallas went all the Zarya maps. Trigger Rail's kind of close, but still all Dallas. 
in my mind. With this plant, Miro and Hawk playing out of their mind. Uh, it's just a really bad showing for Atlanta and Coliseo. So, powerful player of the match. Going to be Hanbin. Probably the best area in the world. The pacing he was playing at and the, the tempo he was setting with the decision making he was had was insane. He knows how to rotate his gravitons and his nano boosts and put them together when he needs to, and he manages bubbles so well. You're never getting charge from him. He's always high charge, and it makes it very hard to win the Zarya mirror in any way, just because he is so good at controlling his energy and the enemy Zarya's energy. And that's before even thinking about Edison's Reaper and Dallas's hive mind in general and how they have so much synergy together. So it has to be Hanbin. Hawk played well. Hawk played very well in the Zarya on Circuit Royale. He was, he was a big contributor to his offense and getting them to see at all. But Hanbin is just that much better. And it's like peak Zarya gameplay. Now, we get to the Grand Finals. It says 4-2 Gladiators here. That was my pred. It was a 4-0. Just a 4-0. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't even really close. Dallas didn't really get any opportunity. Right off the bat, Ilios is a 200-0 for Gladiators. Um, they have Hanbin in on Ilios. Maybe they've decided Fearless was not the one. I think they have a better chance with Fearless in here. It wasn't that bad against, uh, against Atlanta just this, like, hour before, or I guess hours before. But they bring in Hanbin. Fearless gets no play time here at all. And Wells is 100-0. Funny Astro's getting big boops. Kevster, and on his Echo, is getting so much value into Dallas. There's nothing to contest him. He, like, I guess Sparkle can shoot at him, but he's an Echo, and he just is doing the Lord's work. He's denying the Reaper from taking any aggression. He's denying the Zarya from taking any aggression. He is just pummeling the back line. Uh, Hamid doesn't even get gravel in this thing. Uh, Lighthouse, he's not on the Echo anymore. Except he is on the Echo. I'm misreading this. My bad. He is still on the Echo. It's actually a time, there's a clip here, where he hits a six stick on Chio as he's wall riding and jumping around on Lucio and just decimates him. Um... Reiner died early, but then Hanbin also died early, and you're just not going to beat Gladiators on the Winston comp if you're Hanbin. Nothing against Hanbin, he has a serviceable Reinhardt, but we, or a serviceable Winston, but we are in the Grand Finals. It is not enough to be serviceable. You have to be exceptional, and Dallas just don't have a chance in hell of beating them on it, to be straight up. Uh, Kevster, denying any space. He's doing so well. Padafan having a pretty good match as well. Uh, very good map, at least. A great match. Good map. Um, but this one's all Kevster for me. The Echo pick was just untouchable. And Edison on the Soldier was not enough to keep him at bay at all. Going over to King's Row, we have a 3-1 victory for Gladiators. And this was the only map that Dallas won against them in their prior meeting in the winner's bracket. They had a, It was a 4-3 win for um, Dallas in this point. This time it's a 3 1 win, and again, not that close. Um, so, starting on Glad's offense, they're playing Reaper, Genji, Zarya, Ana Lucio. We've seen this one before. Gladiators playing Soldier, May, Ryan, Ana Lucio. Uh, and just overall, you see the run to the Zarya, and the Gladiators kind of roll past A with 420. Uh, so it, this is pretty back and forth. It's super scrappy fights, and there's a lot of ults being used in them. But the the biggest differential for me was even when Reiner dies and he comes he comes back, and the point pressure he uh, exerts is just too much. It's just kind of how the Reinhardt comp works against the Zarya comp. Zarya exerts pre more point pressure than Winston or Doom, but then Reinhardt ex exerts more than Zarya, and it's just so, unless you kill that Reinhardt, it's so hard to stay on the point and find wins against the Reinhardt, especially on this control map, or on this control point, or this, what do you call the first point? It's a control point, right? The, yeah, capture point, whatever. Uh, I'm glad they end up going into B with like 420. And so, as I move on through B, uh, Reiner tries to make a sick play where he gets walled up by Patty and hits a shatter on the high ground as the whole team's there. But Hamid blocks it. And Gladys also commit Blizzard, but Dallas ended up using a grab, I believe, and chasing him out. Uh, they stabilized on this first fight, but it was a very creative option by Reiner, and it was very nice to see. Uh, you'd love to see the team have confidence to go for plays like that. And even if it doesn't work, it's still I still think it's beneficial. Uh, I'd rather lose the fight like that than lose it trying to be normal, you know, or trying to like be standard. Um... Now, there's a time, this, this is kind of maybe like the start or the highlight of how 
much Edison was getting punished. He's hiding in the alleyway as Glad's walk up, and as soon as he pops out, he gets a bubble, but he just gets beamed down by Kevster. He just, the bubble is like gone, and he instant dies. He can't even rate that. And from there, he just kind of gladiators just move. Dallas actually gives them a C9 for the last point, so all the gladiators stop mid fight and type C9 in the chat. Um, Dallas do end up winning the fight, but it's they get the point off. So at what, at what cost, really? Uh, so guys have a lot of time going into C. I don't, I don't write it down, so I don't, I don't remember. But it's a good amount, and they kind of look like they're gonna get stopped here for a bit because how Dallas's comp works. Uh, Sparkle and Edison on the Reaper Genji can kind of use these high grounds around the point, around the like the bends, to find good angles to dive onto the back line, and they end up doing that, and it's kind of a struggle for Gladiators to get it going, to find a way to shut him down, because he gets these angles that has no real way to, uh, they have no way to check in any way, because they have, they're running May, they're running Soldier, they can't, don't have anything that can test that high ground. Uh, so uh, Dallas ended up holding them a lot there, but, uh... They end up winning. These fights are very trade-heavy, by the way. Gladiators don't fully die, and Dallas don't fully win. But because of how many trades Dallas makes, it forced Gladiators to back up, and they can't continue. So that's that's just how it goes, right? That's just Overwatch 2. What gets them through it in the end in overtime is uh, Kempster Visor and Padathon and his May. He they 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 find a way to break through despite Reiner shattering getting blocked by Hanbin, uh, and despite it all, they find a way with their ultimates, um, and then they they just finish up they clean up the recontest. They do a great job stuffing them so that they really struggle to get a good recontest, but uh, Dallas still can't get the recontest in the end, right? So Dallas's offense, not. Great. Um, they do get through A. They have 322 getting into B. But it's not pretty, right? Uh, Gladiators are just kind of pushing them in. There's a time where Reiner hits a charge, cancel, and shatters Hanbin. He probably had bubble up. He could have reacted to it. He just doesn't. And they touch the spawn door. Like, it's that it's that dominant from the Gladiators that Reiner makes sure he touches that spawn door challenge and he completes it. Uh, but Gladiators eventually use both support alts, or Gl Dallas rather, use both support alts to uh, get through into B. It does take them, and Humbin doesn't get grabbed until three minutes in, so that, that kind of tells you how little he's doing. He can't get past Ryan around the shield. Gladiators are taking the initiative, he can't find angles around it, and there's no space being made. Um, yeah, Edison doesn't use a Blossom until like B, like deep into B. And it's just over and over. Gladiators are just taking advantage of them by setting the tempo. Uh, even whenever Dallas do end up gaining more trades, Gladiators just kite and regroup and go back and don't give Dallas that much push. Uh, I believe Gladiators got like three fights off there, probably, that, that you consider lost on the point because they get the arch fight, they get a corner fight, and they get the final fight. And a lot of teams only end up getting two. But the Gladiators being very smart, knowing when they need to die, knowing when they can kite out and regroup and make the fights and mitigate their losses really is a huge difference maker. Um, and Dallas end up getting stopped on B. So, yeah, that's just the Glad setting tempo, having the, uh, the advantage on the Reinhardt comp and shutting down Edison because he's just not making space. Uh, Sparkle will get something done on Dallas every now and then, but he can't do it all into a Ryan comp. The Genji needs some help. And at this point, I'm like, the Dal Dallas need a way to break through. Maybe you consider Doom. Maybe you take the Soldier Mirror. It's something to contest uh, the Soldier if the Reaper's not making any space. Maybe you use Genji as your main space maker instead of Reaper, and you put Edison on something else. But that's just not how Dallas has gotten their wins, and that's not how they're trying to do it now. Moving over to Route 66, it's a 2 to 1 victory for the Gladiators. Uh, more of the same, honestly, I did end up running a lot here, but it's more of the same. Gladiator's offense, we see Dallas rolling in a Reaper Soldier. Zarya on Lucio, they they're decided they're going to win this. We see Gladiator's command on Tracer, Soldier, Doom, on Lucio. So they've, at this point, played three different comps across three different maps. We see them on the Winston, we see them on the Reinhardt, and now we see them on the Doomfist. 
uh, just their flexibility and knowing when they want to play which comps where, insane. And uh, it's it's really a, a coaching difference. Like that Hunter is doing his work, right? So Dallas have a very weird setup here. They're setting up on the high ground and they're back so far that they're letting Glads kind of push for free around big girls. They push past the first corner, they push past the second corner. Um Edison tries to take some space, but it's the same kind of the same old story. Chu finds a Kevster and hits a huge nade and Gladiators just kind of take control and heading to B. I believe Fielder also hits a huge nade at this point. Both of the Honors get big nades. But uh, maybe Kevster. I don't know. Shu finds Kevster. That doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be Fielder. Um, but whatever. But uh, yeah, Gladiators end up taking control and heading into B with 445 despite Kevster being down, despite both teams hitting a big nade. I think Fielder had a bigger nade. Uh, just Jer uh, Dallas and Lazaria aren't able to capitalize on it as much as Doomfist is. Uh, Sparkle swaps over to Tracer at this point. Um, Fielder swaps over to Moira. And uh, the Gladiators just continue. Kevster is going on a tear at this point. He, no one's looking at him at all. Uh, I don't, I, can't, I don't really know. He just is rolling them, and no one is paying attention. Dallas end up do stabilizing, but it cost them all of their ultimates. Gladiators also used a lot of their ultimates, but... Dallas is in a worse situation overall. Their, team, their comp depends more on them, so they need to be more effective with them. Uh, Gladiators end up winning, despite being down somewhat early, and they do end up in the sea eventually. Probably off of uh, Kevster sticking Hanbin in a cool essence. And uh, out of advisor going crazy. So, Glad's end up been going to C with 250. They do get held out on C here, though. Um, Dallas make a decent hold here. But, I don't know. The Gladiators switch over to May, da May and Ryan, right? And Dallas swap over to Echo Ana, having seen that. And maybe Gladiators could have stayed on their comp and for alts alt purposes because they kind of get hold for a bit as they reset their alts. And Dallas kind of look good again for a bit. They take, they're taking the initiative with their grabs, with their beat engages. But uh, Runner pins in, gets a bunch. Kevster pushes forward with Visor. And... Uh, they almost end up capping at the point, but Reiner goes down before he can use Shatter. Padafan Blizzard doesn't find anything because Reiner goes down. There's no more space. Dallas hold out on C. So maybe they could have been more active with their alts, but it's kind of hard at the same time. And just kind of even. So Dallas's offense, uh, they end up making a pass first, but that's all That's all she wrote for them, right? Uh, at one point, first fight, she wins a 1v1 on Edison. I don't know. I don't know how. But uh, Dallas end up do walking forward with Hanbin and forcing Gladiators to either act quickly or get beamed down and they get beamed down. Uh, and then Dallas is looking pretty aggro, but they're still not getting it off of Edison. It's all Hanbin. He is the one that's controlling everything. Edison dies early there. He dies early in the next fight. He dies early in the next fight. And he's end up with 73% on his Blossom with a minute and 10 left. So uh, getting less than 30% per minute on your Blossom is definitely not how you want to win. And it's it's really rough. And it has to come off. Every fight win has to come off of Dallas. has to come off of Hanbin, really. Hanbin doesn't even have a bad series here, I think. It's just he's ha he's trying to do it all alone, and he cannot do it. The Zarya comp cannot do it all alone. Uh, Hanbin get into B basically off a Hanbin grab, and they have 245 going into B, but that's, that's it. Um... Reiner swaps over to the Doom. Dallas are still playing very aggressive. They're pushing into the spawn, but Padapan hits a flank visor and gets three. And it's a very weird visor because at the start of it, it looks like it's going to be like kind of a whiff, but he ends up finding a bunch. And I don't even think he moved that much. So it kind of felt like Dallas just walked into it. Like they didn't kite it out properly. They kind of forgot about it or something. And they just rolled over. And they were playing aggro, but they didn't actually use the alts to maybe get the advantage they needed from playing aggro. Maybe they want to play aggro and then use the ultimate next fight or something, but in the end, they can't do it. Uh, final fight. Uh, Reiner goes down to grab, even through beat, but 
Pataprain gets nanoed and does massive damage, and the gliders don't have anything that can go up there and do it because Edison is dead. Of course he is. Uh, so there's nothing to contest him up on the high ground. Chu dies to Hanbin, and it's looking good, but Pataprain is still up there, and his visor goes crazy. Dallas cannot sit on the cart. They have no cover from Pataprain up on the high ground. is still there on the chaser, and they end up cleaning up, right? So that's it for... Well, their offense and overall, it's just Edison dying on cooldown. Like, Edison doesn't have a bad match, right? Well, you know, he has a horrible match, my bad. Hamba doesn't have a bad match. But without Edison, that is so hard. And on defense, Dallas looks so scared to try and take space because they know Edison is not taking any. So it's like they're not even trying, but that's even worse than, than failing. Not even trying is even worse. And uh, gliders take the tempo every time. Even on offense, whenever they all take the tempo, it's just a Hanbin, man. It's so sad to watch. Uh, I don't know. The Gladiators just are focusing down Edison so well, he is unable to do it. Uh, and Dallas just never adapted. They kept trying to do the same thing, and Gladiators just kept doing the same thing back, but on different compositions. So it's not exactly the same thing. It's just not enough. And Dallas don't have, they don't have the resources, they don't have the ability to uh, win. Uh, Coliseo's a 76 to 48 for Glads. I didn't even write any notes. I was just watching, discussing these people, some stuff. But uh, it's more of the same, right? Nothing really. It, it didn't look like Dallas had much of a shot. It was kind of close at the beginning. It was like 30 to 40, but that's at the very first. And Glads ended up running away with it, really. 76, getting the checkpoint. Once they got the checkpoint, at like, I don't know how long it was, like half maybe or something. It, it just looks like a wrap. Um, so I'm just going to say overall for this match Gladiators same thing as last time they met except even better uh, their flexibility through their compositions and the seamless ability to switch between Kevster and Patafan on the soldier and both of them being pretty elite soldiers in this match for sure I know Patafan has had his ups and downs in this season but in this tournament he has, there's been no doubt that he's looked elite and they just dismantled this team from the ground up uh, shutting down the core of Edison being able to take space and Hanbin following up. If Edison can't take space, Hanbin can't follow up, and he's trying to take space. It just doesn't work right. I've already I've harped on it enough in that Route 66 match, but it just Dallas needs to do something different somehow. Maybe they should have leaned on to Sparkle to take space on the Genji. That's the thing that some teams have done, which is Sparks do stuff like that. Uh, I'm not like they had a good tournament, but it, maybe it was a good option here. Who knows? But whatever they did, not changing up how they're playing it over four matches, apps and losing them all pretty decisively, it's not a great look for Rushmi on his thoughts of being able to adapt. Uh, and Dallas being known for their tempo and aggression end up being out-tempoed and out-aggressioned. And it's, it's sad that they lose this much in the home crowd, but it's not a bad series. It's not a bad tournament for them overall. They still come second. They still get two points instead of one. Uh, overall for the regular season and they can't be too upset they do solidify themselves as the second best team decisively uh rising above the next tier below them i would say but gladiators on a different level and they just got better as the stage went on uh the player of the match for me gonna be kevster uh a huge different maker right at the gate his echo was was crazy on ilios getting that 200 to zero and he had free reign on anything he played, even if it was it was the Soldier, it was the Tracer, it was the Echo, it didn't matter. He went unchecked, he dominated, and he, it was like he was doing whatever he wants. He was in quick play. Uh, it could have went to Patafan, but I think Kevster was just that much better. Uh, Patafan had some, some blizzards that were a miss, but it, the margin for error here was so, so small, and Kevster, I just didn't see any. I saw no errors, really. Uh, Definitely an elite DPS in this league. I don't want to see any more Kevster doubters. I was probably rating him too low myself. I think he's for sure top five in NA, no doubt. Maybe he has an argument for top five in the league even, but absolute insane finals. It's crazy that both of our finals uh, went to what for four O's. You can go check that one out in my last video. That's going to pop up on the screen soon, or maybe it already has. I don't know, but that's going to be it for me. Have yourself a good one. Um, Watch if you're interested in what videos I'm doing in the future. I'm going to do videos on how how these teams, some teams didn't make the kickoff class tournament, how the teams got kicked out of the kickoff class tournament. I'm going to be doing my my thoughts on the different awards at the 
25 25% se- way through the season, according to the season. You'll talk about who my rookie of the year pick is, tank of the year, whatever, stuff like that. That's going to be it for me today. Have yourself a good one and a deuces.